before I proceed to our Christine Bard Parrot passes her regrets. Uh, she's not well tonight. I'd like to acknowledge that this meeting is being held in the traditional unceded territory of the North and Squamish and Seven Chief Salish peoples, and for that we are we are very thankful. Uh, just a reminder on uh, meeting decorum. Uh, just to point out a couple of things that members uh, can request to speak through the chair. Uh, civility towards uh, others is maintained as stakeholder representatives and trustees share perspectives and participate in debate. And it's not be able to submit objective reports without influence or pressure. Uh, if their work is acknowledged and appreciated, community members refrain from personal, inflammatory, and accusatory language or actions. And that committee members, uh, trustees, representatives, and staff present, present themselves in a professional and courteous manner. Uh, starting with moving forward on the agenda, number one, there are no delegations. And number two, 2.1, we have a uh, verbal update from the Associate Superintendent Batista on the EA uh, program partnership. Thank you, sir, the chair. Uh, forgive me for my voice. I'm uh, struggling with a bit of a laryngitis and a cold, so uh, I'll do my best. Uh, this is, of course, when I decide to do verbal report. <laughs> um, just to uh, give you an update, uh, we had started last spring to investigate some ways and strategies on how to increase our uh, student support worker pool. And so one of the strategies that we uh, enacted was uh, developing a partnership with Burnaby who had started their own program last summer. We have successfully launched our own uh, located at Garibaldi Annex. We have 32 students currently registered and attending and they will be graduating at the end of June. So we look forward to hiring many of them, hopefully. Um, uh, this week, uh, starting last week, we, because of the interest, we have now uh, developed a program now, or we will continue to have another program, a subsequent program, which will be starting in July. Um, we are accepting applications. I know that our class team uh, has that information. And that's for a program that will be running between July and November, full time again. Uh, they're running, uh, Burnaby will be running one out of Burnaby South, and we will be running another one out of Garibaldi. At this time, we have about 200 applications. So if the, if it's, uh, they are um, great candidates for our students, then we will be looking at potentially dividing, hosting two cohorts and taking in 60 potential um, students for the program for that will run from July to November with the goal hopefully about a for the starting of December. So that's sort of um, exciting. We, um, yeah, I just want to give you that quick update and uh, I'll give you further updates as they come up. Okay. Nice to see that you're getting more attention and you're adding this another Do we have any questions or comments from the floor? Um, I just want to thank um, the board on behalf of VSTA. Um, certainly the lack of uh, SSW support in our classrooms has been noted over and over and over again. So it continues to be a huge um, concern for teachers and, and ultimately the service to students is compromised by, by uh, not having them. So thank you so much for the efforts and we hopefully the great candidates will come forward. Any other comments or questions? Okay. And I'll move on to 2.2, which is our uh, staffing and recruitment update, as well with Associate Superintendent Batista. Thank you for the chair. So this is just our regular um, update in terms of what we've been doing in, in recruitment and just to give you some historical perspective between the past and now. On the first page of the report, I just wanted to point out that in February of 2016-17, there was a spike in postings, and that was as a result of the $50 million that uh, came through priority measures when uh, the MOA was being developed. So Vancouver saw about 100 FTE um, out of that that was given to us. We received just under $5 million, I think, of the pot, which translated in that condensed period into 100 FTE. If it had been for the full school year, it would have been less. but. We, um, so we had a significant amount of postings and we increased teachers, but that was sort of why there was a spike in that odd month there. I just wanted to point that out to you. And we are on track for what we look like in the normal year in terms of the number of postings, basically um, maternity leaves and some health leaves and, and so on. And that's the teacher uh, uh, piece. 
our SSA jobs, we continue along as well. Um, and again, the numbers are there as requested. And, uh, we continue to, uh, we added the office support jobs posted and for information as well. Um, one of the things that going moving on to resignations and retirements, um, one of the uh, concerns that we are now starting to um, kind of wrap around and to give some data is our resignations for student support workers. And the team is starting, we're starting to get some resources to determine what exactly, um, why there are, they're leaving the district. We are hiring many, but they're also leaving. And we, although we did an exit survey last spring, uh, we only had 16 people return um, out of the SSA group. So what we're going to likely do is just do a shorter survey so that will be emailed to get some just some quick um, uh, information. And I'll share that data in a subsequent meeting um, with respect to our retention and our SSA pool. Um, teaching, our, we're generally doing okay with absences. We've had a few uh, days where there's been a challenge. I wrote the report and then last week we had a spike of some, um, where we had 440, 450 absences on last Friday um, in teaching, so that was a good experience as well. As we're regularly able to fill most vacancies um, in the teaching area. And I think that's all I sort of wanted to point out. Does anyone have any comments? Yes, Karen. Um, yeah, I just wanted to comment on um, just the piece around TOCs and the connection to Remedy and the draw that Remedy is pulling on TOCs. <coughs> Some of the feedback we've heard from our membership is that um, they've been requesting their Remedy and it's being cancelled. And, and you know, the assumption is that they're, they're it's been cancelled to fill it out at a vacancy. Um, so, um, you know, and I know that there's been some restrictions around when uh, Remedy can be uh, booked and can be accessed um, due to that limitation. And so um, really wanting to advocate for the continued uh, hiring of TTOCs because um, we still don't have our collaborative inquiry um, up and running the way it used to. And Remedy is, is a significant draw on our TTOC pool. Um, thank you, Chair. I uh, have to uh, repeat some of uh, the comments that Joanne has uh, raised on behalf of VESTA because uh, we recently um, surveyed our membership and, and the issue of remedy uh, came to light and the reality that remedy is a responsibility to be filled and TTOCs are um, a need that we have. So. Um, we just really have to state again, there is a great demand and um, our recruitment and retention strategy around TTOCs is, um, is important and uh, remedy. I mean, quite honestly, what was clear in the, in the report was that remedy, it would be great if it didn't actually exist. And in fact, classes were just didn't require any remedy. Um, but again, that uh, requires um, many more TTOCs and many more teachers in our system. So, um, that is very, very recent information that we've gathered and it's um, incumbent upon us to re respond to that and, and uh, in any venue that we have. So um, the TTOC shortage is still very, very apparent uh, to teachers and there's a lot of frustration around um, remedy being pulled and the inability to provide it at this time um, for teachers uh, because they spend a lot of time preparing for those uh, teachers, the TTOCs to come in their classroom so they can do other work. And uh, when it's pulled, it actually just makes more work um, uh, as they're reorged back into their own classrooms and the efforts to prepare for a TOC is lost and also any other opportunity to work with teachers to support students is also lost. So um, thank you for that. Chair, we are continuing to hire. We have a, a over 100 um, secondary student teachers in our schools. We're after spring break, we'll have probably well over 100 elementary school teachers. We are going to be recruiting many of them, and you know we have not stopped hiring. Just want to make that very clear. We are continuing to recruit in all fields. Thank you. Um, questions? Janet? Um, I, I think I'm following along with the remedy and the TTOCs and the cancellations and the absences. Maybe you could just explain that maybe a little more broadly for trustees. Sure, through the chair. So um, when there is an open absence in the morning that has not been filled, 
team is looking to make sure that there's a teacher in front of the classroom. And so what would might happen is they see, okay, this upper teacher has booked remedy. And we're going to redeploy that teacher that's been assigned to the remedy teacher and bring it to cover the absence because we know that because the teacher that has remedy is in is on site. So we know that they can cover their own class. So they don't lose their remedy. It's still in their bank. But we need to make sure we're covering all the absences so, so the teachers that are not there uh, absent at the work site. So it's just a, it's a redeployment the remedy sub going to an absence, if that makes sense. And the redeployment would only happen <coughs> if the absence hadn't been picked up by a TQC through the call out. Through the chair. So in the morning, there's the job shopping, there's the call out, numbers of calls, and then the team is looking to see what is still open in the system, and they start my call. And then, <coughs> so they'll start with seeing who's available to work in the system and contacting them first before we deploy. And then that's sort of, so there's the other steps in which they go through. Any other comments? Yes, Tim. I appreciate this is not done for the IUOE group, but that's the question I'm going to ask. Uh, the last time we had a report for uh, cafeteria workers, operations people, and supervision aides was January of 2018. I um, appreciate it's a lot of work at this time, but it, can we get a, a recruitment staffing report for those groups brought back to this committee? We appreciate it. So through the chair, my goal actually for the next month, because teacher postings are sort of parked for a little while because we go into our big spring transfer, was to maybe do something on all of this. That's all. Thank you. Anybody else? Any questions? Janet. For the uh, exit survey, you were talking about you, you did an exit survey previously and you're going to do another one now. Is the intent to do that on an ongoing basis or just at specific times when you identify there's a particular issue? Thank you, Chair. It is, it, it's really green lining resources to do. Exit surveys do take some time. And we are recruiting as much as we can, but we do need information and data as to why we're not retaining them. So it's sort of as, uh, as needed, sort of looking at that, and we're trying to analyze the data as we're going to action. So I appreciate that as you find, as you're, we're, you're collecting the data and then you see a need, and then you're responding to that need. So I think given that we all have to be uh, prioritize our time and resources. I appreciate that that's, the data is there for you to be able to do that. And just a, if I can, as, as a follow up to that, I'm curious too, in terms of being able to monitor uh, during uh, oh, somebody's work uh, work cycle as uh, in this position, if, as, a, as an SSA, if it was a satisfaction survey, is that something that's ever sort of contemplated? That particular group because we know that that's um, you know that's for challenge with, with retaining. So are we able to sort of maybe check in with uh, with, with you know at new at newer SSAs to see how things are going through some kind of a survey as well just to kind of get them before they leave <laughs> if they decide to leave. Well, part of one of my uh, part of the work plan is that uh, I would like employees to look at employee engagement and wellness, and so I'm hoping that that sort of like the satisfaction at work. What is it that we can do to retain you, to help you attend work, all of that? So I think that's for all employees, not just when I can. Right. It's certainly a very useful thing to do, so as you said, for, for all employees to get a snapshot of how everyone's doing in their various uh, positions. So that's good to hear. Okay, um, I have a comment too, but before I do that, any other comments on the floor? Questions? Okay. Uh, I just have a question on the retirements. Um, I'm assuming this number is low because we're not at the end of the year yet. <laughs> that number is probably expected to go back up or to go up. It will go up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just wanted to make sure. Okay, great. Thank you for the update. Um, Carmen, that's great. Um, okay, moving on. We are at 2.3 health safety and emergency management. Uh, it's a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, by Mr. Wiley, Manager of Health and Safety. So I'd like to introduce Colette Wiley, who is our Health and Safety Manager. Um, she has a small niche department, but a lot of work 
Um, she has done some amazing work in the district. She's a lead in the province, a lead across the country. So she's often asked to speak. And so she's just going to do some, uh, a quick overview of sort of some of the things that the Health and, health and Safety Department does, excuse me, in our um, out of employee services. So I'll move it to Cole. Um, Thank you. Uh, this is uh, going to be a very high level sort of review of uh, where we have. For some of you, it will be a review, and some of you, it's what we new information. But to uh, sort of overview of emergency management component uh, of our, and program. So as you know, we we live within employee services. Uh, that's where health and safety um, is located. And when you think of health and safety and what we do, all kinds of words come to mind: uh, staff and work safe and inspections and and uh, WMIS and those types of things. Um, but there's a, there's a couple things here that uh, are about our emergency stuff. So we're just going to talk about this little tiny corner over here today um, of everything that the department does and when you start to talk about emergencies and our department you start to think about a different set of words like threats and and communicable disease and earthquakes and 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 so um and lockdown so we're going to get uh, a little bit into that but i like to always start from a very high level uh, the provincial level uh, the Ministry of Education in 2015 uh, put this document out that was a planning guide for schools and authorities with regards to emergency management. And when it came out, I have to say I was a little bit, uh, I was a little bit concerned what it was going to say. And I was very pleased when I found out that it said all these things, that we should have an EOC, which we have had for some time, incident command systems we've been using for some time, all hazards, procedures, drills and supplies and more. So I was feeling fairly good. Uh, there's there's never such a thing as being 